Hi, everybody. You're tuning in to the IARPIC Collaborations webinar series. This is a program manager chat with the Bureau of Ocean Energy Management. I am Jessica Rohde. I'm the web manager and communications officer at IARPIC. And I am also doing the tech for this webinar. So the very first thing is to remind you to please stay on mute when you're not speaking. And at the end of the presentations, there'll be an opportunity for you to come off of mute and talk. Um, and you can also introduce yourself in the chat. I see a few people have done that. Thank you. Welcome, Bill, Stacy, Julie. Hi, you guys, we're glad you're here. Um, okay, there's nobody else in the waiting room, so I think we can officially get started. So again, just one more time in case nobody heard me, please make sure you stay on mute during the webinar and there will be a chance at the end for you to come off of mute and talk to the presenters who are Kathy Kuhn and Guillermo Awad. And I am going to, uh, well, first I wanna show, uh, say that this webinar is part of a series we're doing interviewing program managers of the IARPIC agencies. We've had an NSF one, and now we're very excited to have this BOEM one today. Um, you can see what the IARPIC agencies are on our agency page on our website, IARPICcollaborations.org. I'm sure most of you probably have accounts, but in case you don't, I will put this link in the chat where you can request an account and join our growing community of over 2,000 Arctic researchers and stakeholders, and we will be holding more program manager chats, and we also have collaboration team meetings and lots of interesting information sharing happening there. So BOEM is part of the Department of the Interior, and this is their agency page on our website. This is where the video of this presentation will live. We are gonna record it and post it there, and you'll see when it's ready in your email digest if you have an account. And we're very happy to host Kathy and Guillermo. So first, um, Guillermo is going to go first. So I will just flip to his profile page and tell you a little bit more about him where you can read it. So Guillermo is not only a, a team leader for the Marine Ecosystems team at IARPIC, but he's also an IARPIC staff member and the senior advisor and ocean science coordinator at OLM. And he has a very interesting background one of the reviewers on the IPPC reports and contributor to the National Climate Assessment. And since he's arrived at BOEM as a senior oceanographer, he's focused on project man management of different environmental studies in the Gulf of Mexico, the Eastern Pacific, and the Alaskan Arctic. Um, and as part of the Arctic, IARPIC staff group, he's currently collaborating with the White House OSTP to advance the coordination of environmental research in the Arctic region. So if you're ready, Guillermo, I will stop sharing my screen and you can go ahead. Thank you, Jessica, and good morning and good afternoon, everyone, uh, wherever you are. Um, first, I, I'm gonna give you a really broad um, perspective on, on BOM in general. And then Kathy is going to speak more about um, the Alaska Regional Office and, and, and more specifics. Um, so let me start with the BOMS mission. Uh, the mission is of the Bureau of Ocean Energy Management is to manage the development of U.S. Outer Continental Shelf Energy and Mineral Resources in an environmental environmentally and economically uh, responsible way. So to manage those resources responsibly, BOM informs its decision-making process with use-inspired scientific research. And this includes the use of uh, traditional knowledge. And there are actually a couple of papers written by BOM um, personnel uh, on, on these issues over the last couple of years. Um, so, in general, the work that BOM does happens within three core programs. Uh, first, oil and gas, then uh, renewable energy, and marine minerals. Um, 
the Marine Minerals Program uh, partners with communities to address serious erosion along the nation's coastal beaches, dunes, uh, barrier islands, and wetlands. Um, erosion affects natural resources and energy, defense, public infra infrastructure, and also tourism. So to help address this problem, the, the, the program leases sand and gravel or shell uh, resources from federal waters on the outer continental shelf for uh, shore, shore protection, beach nourishment, and wetlands restoration, always with a close uh, safety and environmental um, oversight. So the outer continental shelf, this is what you usually might um, here as federal waters is basically the same thing. The outer continental shelf is defined in the OCS Lands Act, which is the piece of legislation that provides the authority to manage minerals on the outer continental shelf and the requirement to provide environmental oversight. So BOM is the only federal agency with the authority to lease marine minerals uh, from the OCS, including responding to commercial requests for uh, OCS minerals, such as gold, uh, manganese, or any other hard uh, minerals. Uh, that's the least known part of the bomb war. It's a small but uh, mighty program. Then the Office of Renewable Energy, that's the second program. Um, they, um, facilitate the responsible development of renewable energy resources on the outer continental shelf through a conscientious planning, stakeholder engagement, and comprehensive environmental analysis and technical reviews. Uh, so if you are a company that wishes to have a wind farm out there in the in federal waters, that company has to come through BOM for uh, environmental compliance. And then uh, number three is the oil and gas program, which is better known um, in, the, in the public uh, community. It's a significant, um, the, the, the outer continental shelf has a, a pretty significant source of oil and gas for the nation's energy supply. So there are approximately 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 uh, 16 million uh, leased uh, outer continental shape acres uh, which is about four per percent uh, they account for about four percent of domestic natural gas production and about 18 percent of America's domestic oil production uh, this leads to the second largest source of income for the US after the income tax, uh, as you might expect. Uh, so BOM manages the nation's um, outer continental shelf resources to ensure environmentally and economically responsible production, production and drilling and the timely removal of decommissioned uh, production facilities. So that means that when there is a well, an oil well that went dry, BOM is also responsible for um, the removal or the uh, decommission of that uh, particular platform or, or facility, including uh, pipelines. BOM uh, also hosts one in-house research program, that's the Oil Spill Risk Analysis Program, which is required to inform and, and to uh, prepare environmental documents, which are later used to make decisions on, on leasing. So often, uh, BOEM contracts out to procure um, surface velocities from ocean circulation models. So this oil spill risk analysis can be um, moved forward and produce the results needing, needed to prepare those environmental documents. Um, BOEM has three regional offices uh, in Alaska. Uh, the Pacific, in Camarillo, California, and in New Orleans. And also one renewable energy office here in uh, Northern Virginia. So, um, 
I want to say a few a few words on how BOEM procures uh, oceanographic and scientific information in general, um, because BOEM needs uh, specific information to to inform its decisions, such as uh, leasing. BOEM uses uh, government contracts, cooperative uh, agreements, and interagency agreements. Uh, we do not use grants. Um, and there are many legal and non-legal differences among those uh, three procurements. This is grants, agreements, and contracts. So BOM uses the, the former uh, two types, which is contracts, and agreements. Uh, I can, I can uh, tell you more about it um, if there are questions. Uh, I think that's an important differentiation. Um, regarding uh, engagement, BOM um, engages domestically and internationally. Um, and this is to support and disseminate its research activities in Alaska. Uh, we engage uh, with uh, colleagues across different sectors, for instance, through the National Oceanographic uh, Partnership Program, which is a bridging organization that facilitates partnering process, the partnering process, uh, with not only with other agencies, but with the academic community, and also with the private sector. Um, BOM is, as you just heard from Jessica, is uh, very engaged in the Arctic. Um, BOM has been participating for, for many years uh, in the IARPIC uh, different bodies from collaboration teams to staff, staff group and principals. And, and this is important for coordinating uh, BOM activities with other agencies and also to provide uh, research policy oversight. Um, internationally, uh, BOM engages through many activities of the Arctic Council. Uh, actually, Kathy is very involved in that. She, I think she's going to speak a bit about that. And also, uh, BOM participates in uh, joint requests uh, for proposals through the Belmont Forum. BOM has participated so far in, in three uh, RFPs through the Belmont Forum. Um, unlike, um, Many other federal agencies also, BOM has the ability to fund um, international colleagues in, in academia or private sector. Uh, for instance, over the past decade or so, um, we have funded uh, universities and private uh, firms in Canada, Australia, Mexico, and Norway. Um, and which is which adds more flexibility to, to our process in order to procure the, the information that we need to, to make those decisions that I mentioned uh, before. So um, I'm going to stop there and uh, to leave enough um, time for questions and for also for uh, Kathy's presentation. Thank you. Thanks, Guillermo. Um, I am just bringing up Kathy's Arabic profile. And I do want to mention there are some people who just joined in. And if you didn't introduce yourself in the chat, we'd really appreciate it if you would do that. Um, Guillermo's just finished his presentation. And now we will hear from Kathy Kuhn. And then there will be time for questions and discussion. So Kathy Kuhn is the Chief of Environmental Sciences Management at BOM. She's worked there since 2008 and manages 60 projects and six staff valued roughly at $35 million of the scientific research projects primarily focused in the Arctic and Lower Cook Inlet and emphasizes collaborative partnerships. <clears throat> so now, Kathy, if you're ready, I uh, muted you earlier, but let's see if I can unmute you now. Oh, you okay. figured out how to do it. There you go, go ahead. Okay, can you see my screen? Yes. I'm gonna try, you can. 
Yep, and we see the slides, but you're going to put it in presenter view and then switch the displays. Yeah, I'll do that. Perfect. All right. Well, hello, everyone. Um, uh, I just want to say thanks to Jessica and Sarah and the whole IARPIC team for allowing BOEM to provide a program manager chat. Um, as Jessica mentioned, my name is Kathy Kuhn. I'm a marine biologist by trade, and I serve as the chief of the environmental sciences section at BOEM, Alaska office. Here we're a team of physical, social, and biological scientists, and uh, collectively we participate in several of the IARPIC collaboration teams. We're pretty excited about that. Um, just as a little bit of background, I live in Anchorage, Alaska, and I've lived up here since 1990. Uh, today, I'll provide a brief overview of our program and give a few examples of our research activities that are enhanced by a multi-agency collaboration. And those collaboration aligns well with the IARPIC goals and specific performance elements. Also, BOEM Environmental Studies Program aligns well with strong interagency communication, coordination, and collaboration to best serve the needs of all stakeholders. And as uh, Guillermo mentioned, uh, the Bureau of Ocean Energy Management's primary responsibility is to manage the development of energy and mineral resources located on the U.S. Outer Continental Shelf in an environmentally sound manner. Now, for those of you that don't know, the OCS, as we call it, is between three miles from shore out to the extent of the exclusive economic zone um, at 200 miles, so we're primarily in the marine environment. Environmental review is conducted on all steps of the OCS program. Um, we, our agency conducts lease sales, geophysical and geological permitted activities, and exploration or development projects. Um, program components uh, in BOEM um, involved in these review include um, our resource evaluation section, our science management section, and our environmental analysis section. Our statutory authorization is derived primarily from the Outer Continental Shelf Lands Act. And uh, we also support a lot of our uh, work through the National Environmental Policy Act. So we do a lot of environmental impact statements as well as environmental assessments. And it's uh, Section 20 of the OXLA, as we call it, uh, that allows us to have an environmental studies program. So uh, back four plus decades ago, somebody had some very uh, good innovative thoughts on how to uh, provide information into the process so decision makers can make very good uh, informed decisions about the environment. So the three types of studies we typically do are baseline studies and those provide information that's needed for the assessment and management of environmental impacts on the human marine and coastal environments of the outer continental shelves and the potentially affected coastal areas. Um, we also have uh, been able to focus on impact studies that predicts impacts on the marine biota that might result from these OCS activities. And finally, monitoring studies, which monitor the human, marine, and coastal environments to provide time series and data trends, uh, information for identifying significant changes in the quality and productivity of these environments, and for designing studies to identify the causes of these changes. Um, right now, we have about uh, 55 projects in the Alaska region, and many of those occur in the Arctic. So just a little bit of history about our program. It started in 1974, and it was initiated to support uh, the Department of Interior's offshore oil and gas leasing program. Over the four decades, we've conducted research in Alaska. We have a variety of focuses, both regionally um, and on terms of information that we collect. Uh, we measure our success uh, in terms of uh, timely delivery of science projects uh, and the usefulness and quality that helps, again, inform um, decisions. Our BOEM Environmental Studies Program supports applied science for management needs. The range of topics we support include environmental, socioeconomic, traditional knowledge, and community input. So we 
uh, go over a broad spectrum of disciplines. And uh, here's a schematic that we use, but we, we use the information from our studies uh, primarily for environmental assessment. So I mentioned NEPA, the National Environmental Protection Act law. Um, we contribute to the overall scientific knowledge of Alaska and beyond, um, beyond for our use own needs. And we determine steps to avoid, mitigate, or monitor the impact of energy and mineral resource development on the OCS. There's some other federal laws um, on the, you see on the um, right bubble uh, that impose additional requirements on the offshore leasing process. These include Marine Mammal Protection Act, the Environmental Species Act, sorry, the Endangered Species Act, and the Magnuson-Stevens Fishery Conservation and Management Act. Um, we also have other ones involved like the Clean Air Act, et cetera. Um, in more details, our Alaska um, office, in addition to collecting baseline monitoring impact studies, also provide perspective um, from a regional and global dynamic of Arctic change. Uh, Guillermo uh, spoke to this a little bit. Through our collaborations, we seek to strengthen, integrate, and sustain Arctic observations and facilitate access to Arctic data and sharing Arctic research infrastructure. Um, in addition to IARPIC, we participate in the um, Sustaining Arctic Observing Network and some of the Arctic Council working groups amongst uh, other boards. Our research uh, priorities are determined on an annual basis. And the priorities in Alaska are based primarily on the current status of leasing, exploration, development, and production. Um, so the two areas uh, right now that are of interest to BOEM Alaska are Cook Inlet uh, area, which is uh, right here, uh, close to um, Homer, Alaska, and Anchorage, Alaska. And uh, there we have 14 active leases. Um, in terms of uh, exploration, there has been um, some uh, G&G work that was done by Hillcor this summer, um, but there is no current development in production or no federal production um, occurring. Right now, we also have interest in the Beaufort Sea, uh, where we have 40 active leases. Um, a company called Eni has um, exploration that started in December of 2017 in the, in the Nakayachuk North Prospect. Um, in terms of uh, development and production, Hillcore Liberty Island um, has been approved in 2018, um, but the only production that's occurring um, in the U.S. Arctic in terms of oil and gas is an area called North Star. It is um, a shared federal and state reservoir. In terms of uh, regional priorities, um, we seek to maintain long-term ecosystem monitoring. Um, we have uh, several projects that have uh, occurred over time and duration, and that is looking at contaminants and marine mammal and physical oceanography monitoring in the Chukchi and Beaufort Seas. We have a new partnership under the National Ocean Partnership Program that started in 2015, and that's to look at Arctic marine biodiversity. And we also have a very long-standing um, work with a partnership with NOAA that looks at the uh, aerial surveys for Arctic marine mammals. We also uh, look to maintain and extend the distributed biological observatories. Um, and these are done, these are um, essentially polygons um, throughout Alaska that represent a latitudinal change detection array. And we support science uh, that uh, feeds in information to better understand uh, changes in hot spot distribution um, across the northern Bering Strait into the uh, Beaufort Seas. Um, our goal also is to strengthen scientific cooperation. Um, we work with the National Science Foundation. Um, we also have multiple partners under the National Ocean Partnership Program. Um, we've worked with North Slope Borough uh, Industry and the North uh, Pacific Research Board, uh, in addition to um, a lot of federal and state and uh, university partners as well. Another goal of ours is to enhance local involvement. Um, I'll give a couple examples of some of our projects uh, later, but we are uh, very pleased with some of the work efforts that we've done on marine mammal tagging um, in the northern part of Alaska, where we actually utilize hunters to help us um, 
uh, tag and understand the movements of uh, whales and ice seals. And also um, synthesizing data um, that can be used uh, across a multiple of disciplines. Uh, we recently completed a project called the Synthesis of Arctic Research, and that was looking at a variety of data sets that have occurred over 20, 30 years on um, physical oceanography and marine mammals and kind of coupling those information to understand um, the movement of key species. Uh, there's a couple special uh, uh, edition articles that came out in um, Deep Sea Research 2, and I can um, point folks to uh, that sets of information. And we've also done a fair amount of work on social indicators. Um, also, we uh, seek to standardize data sharing. We work with the uh, um, Alaska Ocean Observing System, and we also seek to improve um, remote sensing with partners. So I do want to um, provide a couple of study examples um, for you today. And one of our partnerships is with the Alaska Native Tribal Health Consortium, who have pioneered the Local Environmental Observer Network, also known as LEO. And this is guided by a, a PI named uh, Michael Brubaker. Um, LEO is a citizen observer system for monitoring environmental change. Um, this actually meets one of IARPIC's research goals uh, for health and well-being and a specific uh, performance element. Um, LEO has also been supported uh, by the Environmental Protection Agency and is a mapping tool and social network tool that allows community members to document unusual environmental events and to connect with people who have topical expertise. Uh, the network has documented hundreds of observations about unusual environmental events across Alaska. Um, and if you haven't taken a look, I'd recommend uh, you look at www.leonetwork.org. Uh, it's uh, pretty interesting to explore, and if you're in Alaska, uh, please feel free to uh, contribute it. Um, I also just wanted to point out this picture on the screen. Um, this was taken from uh, Francis Ozena um, off Little Diomede Island a few years ago. It shows um, open water and surf, which uh, is starting to be uh, more and more unusual, and um, this is the type of information that gets uh, posted and shared on the LEO network. Another study example is our cross-island subsistence bowhead whale hunt mapping project, and this project um, really incorporates traditional knowledge about whale behavior um, is uh, occurring and also helps inform and um, help alleviate or address Inupiat concerns that and that industrial activities uh, would impact hunting success. Uh, so you'll see on the figure here, um, it kind of looks like a spaghetti map with different colors, but this is where hunters were provided with GPS units. And they also um, take these GPS units out when they're um, hunting whales, and these are uh, lines that represent boat tracks and also whale strikes. So the result of this project has really been a convergence of both um, traditional knowledge and traditional um, science enabling um, conflict avoidance. <clears throat> also, um, you'll notice here we have a, a new study, and uh, that is on land fast ice climatology in the Beaufort and Chukchi Seas. Uh, for those of you that don't know, landfast ice is used as a platform for subsistence hunting and potentially for wintertime activities related to oil and gas exploration and development in the Beaufort and Chukchi Sea. So understanding the extent, stability, and seasonality of landfast ice is important uh, for its safe use. So this is a new um, project that's been awarded to the Alaska, University of Alaska Fairbanks this last fall, and the uh, principal investigator is Dr. Andy uh, Mahoney. So this essentially is another example of a study uh, to combine subsistence use and oceanography in the sea ice research um, component of our work. Um, and so we're hoping to get out of the study you know, a better understanding of the extent, stability, and seasonality of the landfast ice, and again, um, because it's important for its safe use. Um, we have a wide variety of uh, partners, 
And um, you'll see here on the slide um, a set of logos of partners that we've worked with. But BOEM benefits uh, research from more than just our agency. Um, we collaborate with some of our other partners within the Department of Interior and uh, also the Department of Commerce and um, have been able to really form some solid collaborative uh, research uh, under the National Oceanographic Partnership Program. And I do have to add that um, Guillermo uh, is, and uh, his team um, from a project uh, called Mares uh, is a uh, recipient of the National uh, Oceanographic Partnership Program Award. So congratulations to your team, Guillermo. Uh, we're really proud of that effort. Um, so, I just wanted to just kind of put it into perspective is, you know, BOEM scientists not only interpret science for NEPA purposes, but we also design, fund, and foster scientific studies through partnerships with these other agencies, um, universities, researchers, and local communities. So our projects um, fit into larger programs and goals uh, because they look at public health, uh, changing Arctic, sea ice forecasting, marine biology, and a whole host of other arenas. Also something I think unique uh, to the Alaska office um, is incorporating traditional knowledge. BOEM treats traditional and scientific knowledge as complementary knowledge systems. We know that traditional knowledge can provide a more holistic view of the environment and guide us to better management decisions. BOEM has also learned that applying traditional knowledge makes decision making more inclusive and we're very pleased uh, for uh, that opportunity and um, respect and appreciate um, comments that we get from our partners. In terms um, of BOEM's Arctic goals, again, um, pointing out to the beginning slides, it's to promote the energy independence, environment environmental protection and economic development through responsible science-based management of OCS Arctic energy and marine mineral resources. Um, it's also to engage with the state of Alaska and our interagency partners on Arctic domestic affairs and to partner with Alaska Native and other Arctic indigenous peoples and use traditional knowledge in the stewardship of our resources. Um, it's to establish the value of the Bureau's Arctic expertise and experience for furtherance of national and international Arctic science policy and stewardship. In such, we support the U.S. Department of State and other departments and agencies as they engage in international work um, in the Arctic, including the Arctic Council. Um, so some of the knowledge that we get from our Alaska-based studies is goes into a broader pan-Arctic perspective. And uh, I mentioned uh, earlier our partnership with the Sustaining Arctic uh, Observing Network um, and also uh, some of the work with the Arctic Council um, working groups. Some of the information from our studies has led to uh, a better understanding um, for the following working groups of the Arctic Council. Those would include the protection of the Arctic marine environment, known as PAME. Some of the topics that we've participated in there are uh, marine protected areas, as well as an ecosystem approach to management. Also, the working group called the Conservation of Arctic Flora and Fauna, um, also known as CAF, and uh, we participate in the circumpolar uh, biodiversity Monitoring Program. Um, also the Sustainable Developing Working Group, SDWG, as well as the Arctic Monitoring and Assessment Program. I know that's a lot of acronyms, but we really are pleased that uh, the knowledge that we hear um, in Alaska under the Department of Interior and BOEM's guidance are able to support this broader pan-Arctic perspective. I realize I covered a lot of information um, in the last uh, several slides, but I'm happy to uh, address uh, any questions that you might have. Thank you so much, Kathy. That was a lot that I didn't know also. Um, and for everybody, uh, two, two announcements. One, if you joined us late, please be sure to introduce yourself in the chat so we can record for the attendance. And two, you now have the ability to unmute yourselves and ask any questions for Kathy or Guillermo, and you're also welcome to enter questions in the chat. So please take it away.
Well, I do see that uh, Julie uh, posted a question, and uh, it says, uh, I have a new NSF navigating the new Arctic planning grant and wonder how BOEM has so far interacted with scientists, funded either planning or full NAA proposals. I am someone concerned that indigenous people could be feeling scientist saturation, so I'm interested in coordination. Um, thank you, uh, Julie, for your question. I don't know if I have a specific answer on how we, and maybe uh, Guillermo does, on how we uh, have uh, coordinated with um, NSF funded proposals, but I do know that um, we are sensitive um, to, you know, over inundating uh, communities with uh, too many meetings uh, to, you know, develop meeting fatigue, but at the same time providing, you know, adequate information on, on what science is going on and to avoid conflict um, with subsistence, subsistence hunting activities. And um, I'm happy to, you know, talk to you offline later on and maybe we could figure out um, a better way to uh, figure out some good coordination, but I do know um, with our good friends here at IARPIC that they really are also interested in stakeholder engagement. So I think this is a good topic um, to bring up and sorry, I didn't have a more specific answer. It looks like people can't unmute themselves. So I don't know why that would be um, because I did just tell Zoom to allow participants to unmute themselves. So I see that um, Julie can't seem to unmute. I know we just answered her question, but I will unmute her and see if there's anything else you wanted to say. So Julie, we can hear okay. you now. Can you hear me? Yes. Oh, great. Yeah. For some reason, I get a pop-up block that says you won't let me talk. <laughs> so <laughs> That's anyway, a technical thank you. error. <laughs> thank you. Yeah, no problem. I love this stuff. The, um, I really appreciate your comments. And I, I just do think, um, as I'm learning more and more about all these wonderful programs going on across our own Arctic, I do worry about that with the uh, indigenous peoples. And we certainly, some of us that were at the Arctic 2050 meeting heard a lot about that. So I think it, to, to any extent that we can, um, the left and right hand of different projects can know that that's happening the better off we'll be, and also it will decrease any redundancy that we seem to be trying to do. Thank you. Thanks, Julie. And I just put in the chat, I think I fixed it. So now if you want to come off mute, please do so. Hi, this is Vicki Cornish from the Marine Mammal Commission. I just want to say hello to Kathy and Guillermo. Thanks for the great overview. I learned a lot also um, from uh, everything that's going on. And my question is really about um, here at the Marine Mammal Commission, we're working with energy um, and other issues uh, as they impact marine mammals around the country. And I know Boehm's um, budget for science is limited and the work that's done in Alaska is super important. I'm just wondering how BOEM is, um, figures out how to proportion its funding across all the regions and ensure that there's adequate funding for these Alaska programs, which especially the ones that are long-term monitoring programs like the um, Arctic aerial surveys for marine mammals, which are really critical for understanding of marine mammal distribution and potential impacts from energy development. Uh, you, Kathy, you want to answer that or I can give a quick um, numeric uh, answer if you want. Sure, why don't you, yeah. Um, uh, in terms of uh, funding, uh, we have basically four uh, regions, uh, Alaska, Pacific, Gulf of Mexico, and the Atlantic with uh, renewable energy. And, and Kathy, correct me if I'm wrong, but I, I, if I remember right, um, the Alaska region, the investments in the Alaska regions are about 25 to 30 percent of the total bombs budget, which is about it oscillates between 30, 35 million dollars annually. 
and, and of that, about 25 to 30 percent has been going to, to the Alaska region. That's, um, I think, the quick uh, answer. Yeah, and so Vicky, that that's a good it's a good question. Um, so thank you for that, Guillermo. Um, and we, as a program um, nationally, the Environmental Studies Program, um, every year undertakes an annual process. And uh, if you were to go to our BOEM um, website and look up our Environmental Studies Program, you would see um, what we have is a studies development plan, and and it kind of gives a, a perspective um, nationally of of all the different topics that that we cover and uh, the different offices and where their focus are. So each um, office or region um, kind of comes up with uh, information um, needs. Uh, and um, then we kind of come to the table across um, all the different offices and um, roll up our sleeves and try to figure out, you know, what, um, you know, what can be funded, what's a priority, um, what's, you know, generally, I mean, this is a quick answer, but, you know, what's the timing of when the information is needed, and then we try to, um, uh, you know, strategically spend um, the money as wisely as we can. That's why, you know, I mentioned partnerships and partnerships really uh, are important to us. I mean, oftentimes, um, you know, people can come to the table with either, you know, in-kind contributions or money itself or knowledge. And so we really try to uh, well leverage um, programs. And, and so the, pro the one project that you mentioned, um, the aerial surveys for Arctic marine mammals is one that we have le really well leveraged with NOAA over the years, and, and we're particularly proud of that information. Thanks. Great. Thank you so much. That's helpful. And I noticed uh, Arlo had a question. I'm going to unmute you now, Arlo. Go ahead. Hi, great. Thank you. This is Arlo. Can anybody hear me? Yes. Yep. Yeah. Oh, great. Uh, I get those email updates from the U.S. Arctic Research Commission every day, and I just saw that uh, Alaska Senators Lisa Murkowski and Dan Sullivan introduced a bill that would create a regional center in the Arctic uh, for security studies, and it would be under Department of Defense. And I was just wondering uh, if BOEM would be partnering or with DOD to do that kind of work or how BOEM sees themselves fitting into um, a DOD Arctic Center for Security Studies. Um, just curious. Thank you. Um, well, I just saw that today too. Uh, so that news was um, I, I love reading those um, daily Arctic uh, news wires. In case anybody wants to look at it, we can send you the link. That's just like, you know, two to three sentences on, on what's going on. But um, I know um, historically um, there is some work being done by the Arctic Domain Awareness Center, and I think that is either funded by uh, Defense or um, Homeland Security. And they've done also a lot of uh, good work uh, specifically up in the Arctic, including on some um, oil spill modeling. And I can't think of any specific projects that we've like co-mingled, um, you know, funds or resources on, but I do know that um, we work with church keys and are actively involved in um, any of the workshops or meetings that they have on. And, um, you know, Arlo, if you want to um, shoot me an email or I could give you my email address, um, I could, you know, uh, provide you, you know, with that, some information and context. But again, I just saw that, that news blurb today too. So I might be off base on the linkages. Hello, Kathy, this is Allison uh, calling in from Homer. Hey. I just wanted to thank you for sharing the information. And also um, I, Oops, sorry about that. Um, believe that we've uh, ingested the um, BOEM projects previously from the North Slope Science Initiative into the Arctic Research Mapping application and that they could use a refresh. So I'd love to set up a time to follow up on in ingesting an update of the 55 ongoing BOEM projects around Alaska. Yes. So let's, let's follow up over email. Thank you. Okay. I see 
see that Oakley yeah, also the, has a question. Yeah, there is a question by Oakley Hill and, and from also Rene Tavisco. Oh, yep. Yeah. So I have, uh, sorry, I was trying to figure out how to unmute myself, which I just did. Um, so the project that I'm working on, uh, we're looking into conflict mapping and establishing a conflict early warning system for uh, communities in the Arctic. And uh, uh, one, something that would be very helpful for us is understanding, is understanding BOEM's relationship to other organizations and institutions. You did go over that uh, a little bit and, and uh, thank you for doing that. I was wondering if I could get uh, any more detail or, or uh, maybe any documents that would help us link uh, BOEM with other institutions so that we kind of have a good understanding about how things work. By other institutions, yeah. you yep. mean other institutions in Alaska or federal agencies, or what do you mean? And also, can you say a bit more about mapping uh, conflict? Is that, uh, what kind of information are you including in those maps? So uh, right, right now, uh, we're, we're at the very beginning of this project, so we're just interested in uh, looking at organizations, and how they relate and how they interact with other organizations. Um, so, for example, you discussed um, how some of your research has been given to the Arctic Council uh, working groups and has helped them to make decisions. That would be, that would be an example of a relationship uh, that we would like to be aware of, for example. Well, the, the bombs yeah. engagement, sorry, Kathy, um, bombs engagement, like Kathy mentioned, and I also mentioned earlier, it's really wide um, across right. many sectors, um, federal government, um, stakeholders across many sectors also in Alaska, um, private uh, consulting firms, and, and yes, I think you make a good point in, in tracking not only the science, um, but also the use of that science by, like you mentioned, the, the Arctic Council. I think that seems like a useful way of um, looking at the connectivity in, in this uh, complex Arctic system, at least from, from, from the science and the decision-making perspective. Uh, yeah, yes, yes. Um, yes, and thank you. Um, yeah, if there's any, if there's any resources, if there's any way to um, maybe get more detail on yeah. some of those yeah. relationships, that would be really helpful. Thank you. The other thing is the, um, the studies program that uh, Kathy leads in, in Anchorage. Uh, over the last 40 years, it has funded a very large number of uh, social science studies, socioeconomic studies, and, and if the region is um, well known for something, it's because of those uh, social science studies which are uh, unique and are being cited um, everywhere. Um, so I, I will encourage you to, to get in touch with uh, Kathy and, and her uh, staff to follow up on that. Great, thank you. And I just wanna quickly say, you all are welcome to share any of these resources on the IARPIC Collaborations website. Uh, it's like a social media site where you make a post and then once a week, a collection of posts is delivered to your inbox, our email digest. So please feel free to share with the broader community there. And I'm putting the link in the chat as well. Looks like there's another question in the chat. Could you share another? Oh, not a question, but a comment. <laughs> this is Rada. Do I have a question? Hello? Go ahead. 
Okay. Um, yes, thank you, Kathy, for a good overview. I was wondering if you can, uh, you mentioned the remote sensing projects. Can you comment more on, on those types of projects uh, that you either had in the past or envision in the future? Um, Rada, that's a good that's a good question. Um, I don't have a good example for you right now, but I'd be happy to to follow up. Yeah, no worries. Thank you. And if anybody else was having trouble unmuting earlier, just let me know and I can unmute you. I do have another question. Uh, this is Radha Gain. Um, either, um, are there any interlinkages with uh, North Slope Science Initiative? Um, I just happen to be on the board and I'm a new member, so I just wanted to throw it out there. Yeah, um, well, thanks for that question. Yeah, we are um, um, a partner um, under the North Slope Science Initiative, and um, we um, have you know senior staff that um, are involved. I think um, my understanding is that there's several meetings a year where you know at one one time of the year in the spring there's a, a overview of uh, by each agency and also industry of uh, potential research activities that are going to be going up on the North Slope, uh, both um, terrestrial and uh, marine, and also um, as Allison Gaylord suggested or, or mentioned that we uh, have historically posted, you know, all of BOEM's research um, on um, the NSSI um, website that can be linked from. So um, I can put you in touch with, um, you know, our person that does a lot of work with NSSI and happy to um, answer any questions for you on that. And congratulations on getting uh, involved in that committee. Yeah, that'd be great. Thank you. Well, unless anybody wants one last chance to speak up, I think we've had a pretty good discussion. And thank you so much to Guillermo and Kathy. I think we all learned a lot. You're getting some praise in the chat as well. Um, and yes, you can follow up with Guillermo or Kathy via the Arabic website. And I hope you'll request an account if you haven't already. And we'll keep you posted on our future program manager chats. Did you want to say any final words, Guillermo or Kathy? Thank you um, uh, to IARPIC Collaborations, to you and uh, Sarah for uh, inviting us and uh, have the opportunity to share um, our work and um, the general um, information uh, describing our agency our work and, and and the impact of what we do um, through funding different uh, research projects yeah thanks for everybody for tuning in and uh you know if you don't um if you have any more questions um as jessica mentioned let's uh, start a conversation on the uh IARPIC website i find that a really useful way to, to um, receive and uh, share information Okay, great. See you guys next time. Thanks again.